Let's go! Max Johnson's your QB1. And I actually had a Max Johnson film study week lined up for you, but we're going to fast forward it now, especially after the Miles Brennan news, because, uh, look, this is a huge story. And what we're going to show you today is what Max Johnson brings to the LSU offense that Miles Brennan simply does not. So we obviously go back to, to me, the best quarterback performance last season was Max Johnson versus the Florida Gators in the swamp. All the injuries, not even 50 scholarship guys, were down to the third, fourth, and fifth string running back. And honestly, I thought Steve Insminger called a near-perfect game. Now, he got a little too conservative in certain aspects of this game, but part of that was due to the fog. So we get a play-action fake here, all right? And Florida was thinking run on first down. How do we know this? These linebackers bit pretty heavy. So guess what we get? We get Max Johnson rolling out to his left, his arm side, and notice what we get. Two open receivers, an easy completion to start this drive. Florida had been driving up and down the field, but what happens here? And Coy Moore runs a perfect route, and he had a really good game. Look at that. Planted his foot, created separation. The only thing he did wrong here was he left his feet too early, okay? You notice he's diving for this. If he would have just kept running, this ball was a little high. But you notice he just extended himself too quickly. If he would have just kept running, he probably just catches that. So yeah, you know, these two do work out a lot together, and I think this connection will be made during the season. The throw needs to be a little better here. Obviously, Coy probably should have brought that down anyway, so, you know, I, I think this was a good learning lesson for him, and more than likely, it's not going to be a fog storm in whichever game they're going to play uh, next season. Also, something else you could say about this play call is... This ball probably should have gone to here, okay? Why is that? There's less traffic throwing the football out here. When you're throwing the ball back towards the middle, kind of, sort of, here, this is just a better throw. It's a little bit further down the field. Dre was on fire this game. So either way, yes, the ball was incomplete, but still, uh, the end result isn't what matters there. It's the play call itself. You can't run those types of plays with Miles Brennan as your quarterback, but you can do so with Max Johnson as your quarterback, okay? So now we move ahead here. Uh, this is after that play. Was there a memorable play that happened right before this? Anyway, uh, so after the shoe throw, uh, we, LSU is in a first and 10 situation, and you see here Max Johnson's getting a check here at the line of scrimmage. So, Yes, LSU got really lucky to get to the spot, and we're actually going to break down the shoot-throw play on tomorrow's film study. And look, I, I'm a big believer in Max Johnson. I really am. There are some limitations to his game, and we'll get to that. But overall, the fact that LSU can do things like what you're about to see, such as right here, LSU actually is going to check into a zone read. And notice... These defensive linemen play really aggressive on this play call right here. And we're going to go ahead and just run it. You get a zone read here. Max Johnson really didn't even sell this fake all that well. And Cam Wire pulls, gets a good block here. Cox, the defensive end, was just so fooled by this fake. And that's what Max Johnson can do. Florida, after the emotional penalty... They had been so undisciplined defensively this entire game. It's it's crazy how many blown assignments they had here. Um, guys just playing for themselves. Things like this begin to happen. So obviously LSU gets a little lucky here uh, that this backside end just crashed down so hard and nobody kept backside contained. But that's what happens. All right. Before the snap, Chris Curry was on this side of the line of scrimmage. Innsbinger flips him, zone reads this backside, and what you're going to see on the next play after this is how that affects it. Once again, 
This would have been my starting offensive line if Dare Rosenthal would have stayed. I would have kept Cam Meyer at right guard. Um, Cam was really good at right guard to close out the season. He did whiff a block later on this drive, but still, it was really good considering this was the first time, you know, he played right guard, and he pulls around here, and Max just keeps it. That's what he brings to your offense. So now we move ahead to second down, all right? Now, Britton Cox knows that Max Johnson could keep it, and guess what? We even got a little bobble on the snap here. But because Cox has to support or respect Max Johnson's ability to run, and once again, Max Johnson is not Tim Tebow. He's not Michael Vick. He's not just this dynamic runner. But notice what happens here. We get a really good double right here. Ed blows this guy out. Good job by Dare. We get this double. We're able to hold this unblocked in, and Steve Ensminger goes right back to challenging him, Cox. And we had gotten him a few times earlier in the game, and Chris Curry actually should have planted and just ran into this space. Instead, head down, runs right into this guy, left some yards on the field, but still, good run by Curry to finish strong here, and we get a nice, healthy run right there. Alrighty, so let's go to the spring game. And I've made this comment on a few live streams that I felt Jake Peets was a little bit more comfortable as a play caller with Max Johnson as his QB1. And you'll see what I'm talking about here, okay? Now, remember the very first play I showed you, the incomplete pass to Coy uh, to the outside with Jare running it out here. LSU runs a very similar variation of that on this play, okay? So... We're going to get uh, a play-action fake here to Nick Demas. Now, once again, this is the spring game. This is Max Johnson running with the second-team offense against a second-team defense. But here's the benefit of Max Johnson, okay? Now, this time, Durante really didn't do this a lot in the spring game, but he brings a safety into the box, okay? Safety's in the box, and Durante is guessing on first and 10 they're going to run the football here. But they don't. It's a play-action fake, and it really is a very similar play. Except here, I think, once again, I don't have the all-22. I think this is just a go-round here, and you're running an out with John Trey, and you're running a drag here with Devonta Lee, okay? So let's just go ahead and keep this play, beautiful bean footage, rolling along here. Good job by Jack Mashburn getting a piece of uh, Desmond Little here to lose contain. And Max Johnson does a very smart thing. And a good job of here by Mashburn not getting a stupid blindside block penalty here. And he wouldn't have cleaned out one of his teammates anyway. And it is a perfect play call here on first down, especially when the safety came into the box to help defend the run. Probably got a little lucky here that we didn't get a holding call. Because uh, that is a hold right there on uh, Jacoby and Guillory. So once again, this backup line needs a lot of work. But you notice when you have a running quarterback, it helps out an offensive line that's struggling to call plays such as this one. These misdirection plays that keeps the defense on their heels. Okay? Now, could Max have delivered this football anywhere? Once again, I don't have the All-22. This wasn't open. But once again, just take what you can get. And these are good, easy yards to pick up on first down. And you see what that can do. So good job by Jake noticing something on film that works for Max. These kind of rollout types of plays. And good job by Max. And these are your two quarterbacks right here. And this, man, I freaking love this so much. Nuss still in the game, cheering on the backup quarterback here. This is a kind of camaraderie. Here's Durante right here. It's just good stuff. I, I mean, that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable by Gary Nussmeyer as a backup, right? Well, yes. I mean, that shows you that he's always locked in. And, you know, we talked about him doing something very similar after John Trey Kirkland had a fumble on a perfect throw that he made. That's called being a really good teammate. So here we go, okay? <laughs> we get a good run on first down. That's obviously really good stuff from Nuss. 
we move along here to second down, okay? So you watched the first play versus Florida, and now let's see what Jake Peets decides to do here on second, all right? So that play action fake to Nick Demas does a lot to the defense, right? That lets even, and once again, that is Nick Demas, the seventh or eighth string running back. This is your second and third string off at the line that is struggling mightily, okay? And Max Johnson, once again, is not an elite runner. So what does that tell you? That play action, and this has been proven by analytical studies, play action is still effective when you can't run the football. And having a mobile quarterback increases the productivity of play action plays, okay? So... Once again, back up off its of line. Now we have a light box. We did a film study last week on Jake Peets versus Durante Jones. What Jake Peets did a good job of, and this was an adjustment he made in the spring game, he widened the splits of his wide receivers. So early on in this game, he actually had his offense, he had his wide receivers lined up more tightly to the line of scrimmage. By widening these guys out, this increases the space for potential zone reads and just all kinds of stuff you can do in this space as far as zone reads in the running game. And we'll show you that right here. So here we go. It's second and five. Okay. And this time in the Florida game, you saw you saw uh, Chris Curry come on this side and then they back side this defensive end they zone read this in but this time they don't do that they're going to zone read this play side in all right and here's the snap got a little bit of awkward silence there <laughs> so you get a zone read here and this time max johnson keeps it and all philip webb a really athletic defensive end has to do is touch max johnson and that play is dead and he probably should have handed this football off because he reads this backside in and he doesn't crash. And Philip Webb actually plays this really well. You notice he squeezes down this hole right here and still is able to keep contain right here. And all he has to do is touch Max Johnson. But this is what the zone read does. <laughs> it is so volatile and it's so tough for this defensive end to make this play. All he's got to do is touch him, and it's dead in the spring game. He doesn't even need to tackle him. And notice this offensive line. Once again, this is a group that did not have that great of a spring game. Just the ability of having a running quarterback, you notice how easy it was for them to just wash these guys out. Also, another thing that this zone read does, okay? Here's a guy that we talk a lot about on the channel, Cardell Thomas. He's going up against Jaqueline Roy, who is a starters level player. Out of anyone on this defense that's on the field right now, Jaqueline Roy is going to play the most. So we got to make sure we block this three technique who had been torching this backup unit. Because of the zone read, you're able to leave this defensive end unblocked. And I want you just to focus in on this double team right here. Okay, Cardell Thomas who had an up-and-down spring game, a guy who was struggling to get his footing. Look at how much this zone read helps him because he gets a really good double here from Garrett Dellinger. Now watch this double, okay? Because of the zone read, because of Max's ability to run, you're able to keep a guy on block, and it allows you to commit another guy to defend their best player, okay? So just watch this double, Good fire off to Quillen Roy a little too high, but look at Garrett Dellinger just moving this body, okay? Look at what we're doing to this three-tech. We are blowing a really good defensive end off the football. It sounded a little weird, but still. Um, you're finishing, and look at all of this surge. The only person that really kind of sort of missed their block was the center, Spencer Payne. He had the toughest block uh, out of anyone here. Uh, once again, he was the one that got away with the holding, but once again, the zone read can, can hold those things up. All right. And then just look at where this double is. This is the play side defensive tackle. This is filthy. You want to know why Ed Orgeron likes Garrett Dellinger? It's because of this. 
Look at that. A true freshman doing that to a future NFL defensive tackle. Also, another quick side note on this play. Why I'm really high on Armani Goodwin. It probably wouldn't have worked here. But if Max Johnson would have handed this football off, if we would have gotten a better block on this A-gap right here, and probably a probably, I say probably, a better center. Once again, this is probably our third string center here, Spencer Payne, um, who's a freshman. If we would have gotten a better block right here on this A, we would have gotten, even if you would have handed this ball off, look at all this green right here. And Clyde was so good at this, planting and just going. So here's Armani Goodwin. This is why I think he would be a good fit with Max Johnson. Maybe not right now, but down the road. We need a running back that's able to make the cutback that we showed you there with Nick Demas. And this is exactly what Armani Goodwin does here. He feels over penetration right here. Good job by this offensive lineman to get to the second level. And he sees this cutback. He sees all this green grass right here. And he cuts it. And then whoop. Makes that guy miss, makes another guy miss, and houses. But that's just a little side note for you. But but still, you, you see how how things begin to open up just a little bit. There you go. You see what the zone read can do for uh, a team or just a quarterback's ability to run. And you saw, you know, Jake Peets. And actually, after those two plays, he used more variations out of it. Uh, you play action, and it opened up plenty of passes later on in the drive. And I'll link the film study down below if you want to see the two plays that happen after it. And that was by far LSU's best drive of the spring game. Now, once again, that was the backup unit. And it is important to mention that Max Johnson last season got to play against an undisciplined Florida defense. And Ole Miss who was arguably uh, the second or third worst defense behind only Vanderbilt. So, you know, uh, that obviously does factor into the equation. But... You know, Max Johnson's been putting in a lot of work with Coy Moore, who we referenced earlier, who I think could step up in a major way. And Jure, Max and Jure had a good rapport as well. So, yeah, you know, it's in that case, John Guy is kind of good as well. Uh, you know, it, it, it is interesting that continuity from last year going into this year. But can Max Johnson do this against the better defenses? You know, we'll, we'll see. You know, that same question was also out there for Miles Brennan, who also didn't play the tougher defenses on LSU's schedule. So it, it, it is very fascinating uh, how much opens up for the LSU offense with Max Johnson compared to Miles Brennan. Now, there is an argument to be made about the deep passing ability of Miles Brennan versus Max Johnson. And guess what? We're going to do that on some upcoming film studies because there are some decisions that Max Johnson made in the Ole Miss and Florida games that were very questionable. And obviously, that's why we try our best to be as objective and do the best type of analysis we possibly can on the channel. And that's why I need your comments down below. And you guys really sounded off on yesterday's video involving Miles Brennan. In fact, we ended with this exact image uh, of the three quarterbacks as it zooms in on my ugly face. But, you know, it, it is interesting. Miles Brennan did say that his surgery went well and he could come back later this season depending on the timetable. We don't know exactly know those, the, 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 we don't know what those details are exactly just yet. So hopefully you guys uh, got something from this film study. I learned a few things as well. You got a few extra nuggets about uh, Garrett Nussmeyer and Armani Goodwin in there as well. So obviously, you know, comment down below. Do you think Max Johnson will lead LSU to a college football playoff before his career is over at LSU? So either, either it's this year or the next year or maybe the year after that, uh, let me know in the comment section below. It is Power Hour LSU Boom! So if you're watching this on a premiere, we're just now getting ready to start a live stream. And of course, uh, always come by our live streams. And there's some other content floating in your face right now. And uh, I think we're doing chicken tortellini tonight. Chicken tortellini tonight. Let's go!